We are back with the second half of round one. I am the bottom Nate, and that is the top Nate. Nate hey, squared yeah. commentary. How's We're, it going, Nate? It's going great. We're here at the 2017 Ledgestone Insurance Open, presented by Discraft. We got round two. Round uh, one? All right, yeah, round two, round one, but the back nine, so part two of, of round one. Uh, we have uh, Michael Johansson, Nikki, Nico Lacastro, Ricky Wysocki, and Robert Craig, and this is hole 10. Different from last year. Much different. We yeah. uh, we wanted to you know stay off the road. We had some safety issues, and I, I just didn't like the way it flowed last year with the out-of-bounds. This is just a wide-open bomber hole that gives players a chance to kind of crush it. Yeah, it does. It really does. You're going to, you know... I, I like the change here. I think where we are right now, guys, on the course is a, a, an area where these players really want to try to take advantage. Ricky tried to throw the power hyzer. A little too low. Yeah, and this grass, you're not going to get a skip on this grass. If it was more than two feet, I'd be surprised. But very gettable hole for a lot of the field. The distance on it might say 500. Plays like 460, 470. Yeah. And that's got to sit down. MJ just... That, that crank just kind of got a little bit left, so he'll have an obstructed jump putt. And that's something that I think is difficult for MJ. He likes to really work the disc. This is really just a power hyzer yep. hole, yep. in my opinion. Nico is trying to flip one up, and actually he did. That looks really good. Yeah, that looks great. I think he's going to park it. Oh, no. Jeez. Goodness. That was... That was that's unfortunate. That was a great drive. You know, maybe a little too far, but that was a great drive. Honestly, had he hit... Seriously, had he hit 10, 10 feet shorter, he'd be parked just because of the way the grass. Or even maybe five feet. I mean, that was really yeah. close. And that looks like a good drive there from Robert. Yeah. Just a little short. Yeah, um, edge of the second circle. Looks like we had 17 birdies on this hole. Um, so actually, you know, that's – most players are going to par this hole. Ricky is going – he was going for that one, so. Yeah, Rick, Ricky is always going for everything. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> So Robert is at circle two's edge, so we got 60 feet here, and that's got to sit, and it did. So Nico's not going to be happy with, you know, putting for three from there. MJ, MJ had a line on the yeah, left side of the tree. Rounds, that yeah. was, I mean, that is a, a tough line on the left side of the tree. So this is Nico for par. Yeah, that's it. it doesn't hurt. Yep. It doesn't hurt. He, you know, obviously he'd love to get the birdie there. He threw the drive for the birdie. But honestly, I feel like, again, remember this for the rest of the week, I think this is a power hyzer hole. I'm yes. not sure a flip up works great here because of what we just saw for Nico going long. Had you he thrown yeah. a big hyzer, I, I just don't think that would have happened. You don't want to miss left here. The miss is right, power hyzer, and, th and that's not MJ's shot. And Nico likes the flex shots. So I think that that's True. So all pars here. Um, going on to hole 11. Hole 11 is actually the, um, the easiest hole on the course, the shortest hole as well. It's one that you just. You just want to get it. Yeah, I mean, the wind was was really favorable here, coming over. Kind of, it was a le it was a left to right wind, slight headwind, but it seemed like it was coming over the back shoulder. But it was more just a left to right. And this is, in my opinion, automatic sidearm for if you have a sidearm. If you like the sidearm, go left to the power line, skip it in there. The back end's fine. It's just this is a lot easier. And Ricky is going way wide. If it takes a big skip, he'll be fine. But he's. I mean, that's not really a great shot for Ricky Sidearm. But when MJ is throwing Sidearm, you know it's probably a Sidearm hole. I'm actually surprised. I mean, I'm, I'm actually shocked he's throwing a Sidearm, but he just showed why. The, I mean, that's a great shot. 20, it is. 22 feet from the basket. Yeah, this this is the shot that, that I'm throwing, a little putter shot, just like Nico here. It was a little bit of a... Of a crosswind, but he's throwing a stable putter. That's right. Oh, that's basket. parked. Yeah, that's a that's a nice shot. That that's exactly what us backhand players want it to look like. But yeah, I, you're you're absolutely correct. Sidearm is very very doable. This is right probably through parts. the power lines. Oh, that was a weird backspin kick left, and 62% uh, hmm. of the field birdied this hole. So this is as close to a must get as it is in this course. Absolutely, and really. This this section that they're on, you're gonna want to see. Yep. Probably two birdies out of this section, uh, if you know, if not more. Uh, Paul McBeth got all four. You know, a few other players got all four. And I know, I know that you had, we we had talked about earlier in the first nine that really the the front six or so could really kind of make or break your round. But this middle yep. section can do the same. It can save you from a bad start. Uh, or can just continue to propel you forward. Yeah, it, it looks like 
and you're right, and it looks like Robert actually putted to, out of bounds there, so that, that's a great comeback, but there is some water down there, so he got a little aggressive on that short putt. Yeah. And actually, 10% of the field did take bogey or worse than this hole, which is really, I mean, you are... You're you're losing significant strokes. You're, you're losing you're losing ground, and <laughs> that creek is close. So it, it is. You know that that's unfortunate, but you'd hope that you can maybe save it. But I, it, it, actually, with some bushes and stuff there. Five players double bogeyed that hole, and we had one triple. So oh my I mean, goodness! That's okay. I, I wouldn't say it's a round killer, but a double bogey there is losing probably three strokes there. So, but we had three birdies in a par there. So, Robert, actually, wow, he must not have been out of bounds. He must have gone down there and somehow not been in the creek. So, good, good for him, right on the edge. Yeah. Hole 12, wow, just probably the most iconic hole in the course because everybody knows about it. The water tower hole. The the uh, just Nate, what is this hole like to you? Yeah, this is you know one of the most difficult holes. You want to birdie it, but you know you could you can miss it. 354 plays more like 400. Just FYI for all you fans out there, those banners that we saw in the video are not there in the tournament. We've actually that we had them moved back behind. Ricky's on the big hyzer here, and you know what? That's that's Beautiful the reason why shot. I I wanted them moved. So yeah, it, that 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 would have hit the wall and stayed out of bounds, and that's not what I wanted on this hole. Yeah, this this is really not an island hole. That that out of bounds there is just to make it very challenging. MJ and throws a just fine shot. And see that that would have been knocked down by the wall too. Exactly. So that was a great shot. He's just outside the circle. All you want to do here is get it near the circle on the right side. Left side's kind of challenging because you're going to be obstructed by the water tower, but. The only reason you would be on the left side is if you were an only back or only lefty or only side arm. Sure. Miko throws one. Yeah, those, they're actually going to have unobstructed putts at the basket. If they were another 10 feet to the left, they'd have the edge of the water tower. If they were 10 feet to the left, you can just roll it off the tower and just kind of bounce it around. Yeah, being here in central central Illinois, you, you get used to seeing water towers, and you're probably about three miles out from, from Eureka here. You see the water tower. You know where you're going. Yep. Um, so what, you guys don't have water towers out west? Nope, not not like we do <laughs> out here in, in the Midwest. But uh, Robert actually ended up out of bounds. Now he was playing from the drop zone. So he got it in, so he'll be putting for four from there. Yeah, and you'll see a lot of that happening. Uh, it's a tough it's a tough um, drop zone area. You can't see the basket. You cannot see the basket. You don't want to hit the tower because you don't want to roll out of bounds. Exactly. And M MJ. MJ, that was... That was just over the edge. Yeah, I snuck it in the left side. He Giving some the love basket. to the St. Jude basket. Speaking of St. Jude, that, that's our big charity for this event. If you want to buy a raffle ticket to support St. Jude, we are giving away all of those baskets. Awesome. Nico, just off the St. Jude uh, top of the basket there. This is a formality, really, for Ricky. He should nail that every time. And he does. Keeping his round going, I think that that moves him to five under through twelve, no bogeys. He's feeling good. We saw a little bit of frustration earlier. I think that was just because of the four pars to start, but uh, and things, this, things are in good good shape for Ricky. This will actually played as the third most difficult, so it played three point six five, and it's just because of that drop zone with the out of bounds. So if it's, you go out of bounds, you you cannot make a par, and you may make a double just like Robert did. It's straight uphill, no visuals, plays four hundred feet. The water tower, uh, it's, it's a tough one. This is my favorite hole in the course. My buddy Justin says this hole is too hard, but he needs to just throw it further. So <laughs> this hole to get a birdie, right, 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 right. Stay on the water's edge if you want to get it. Going up the middle is not the way to get a birdie and not the way it's designed. If you want to get a birdie, be aggressive here. This hole is just so hard. Great par five, really great. True par five as well. Absolutely. Um, Ricky's going to throw the hyzer here. We had we'd caught up to these guys, so I saw these in, in person. It's a little fortunate. That's actually that's a, a pretty nice kick. That's a great kick. Because if he goes left there, he probably can't go the right gap. For for you fans at home, if you can keep a perspective, if you see the tree that, that Ricky just hit uh, and to the right, 
That's a little bit left, but short MJ's enough that he can probably still throw the Heiser. But we're trying to land to the right of MJ's disc, maybe a little bit further. But that's still a great shot by MJ. I mean, that's for a, a guy who doesn't throw a, a Heiser. That yeah. was a Heiser flip. You know, Nico's too far left here, but it's still he's probably going to have to go with the left gap there. I, w- I It's hard to tell from this angle, but if you're short enough, you can still True. get the Heiser. Yeah. And it's Robert is uh, not is, happy there. And, you know, that's going to float away. But uh, that's uh, he's, he's, he goes to the drop zone. The drop zone's actually an easier shot than it was last year. So you can make a six from here, but you probably can't make a five. If you made a five from this, it would be un- unbelievable. Wow, he has got to sit down. So he just bounds, crossed yeah. in front of the 500 foot. So he'd be throwing a four from there. Yeah, Nico has a great hyzer. I mean, I mean, this is where you want to land. So you're going to go power hyzer, power hyzer. Have a putt. Yeah, if you if basically it is three big hyzers, Nico's in the perfect landing zone there. We'll probably see Ricky do the same thing. If you really the tee shot, the tee shot is everything here because if you're on the right side throwing this hyzer, um, it's a, it's a placement shot. It's not really about it's distance. Not, it's not. It's a placement shot. So it absolutely is. And that's not. a great second shot by Ricky. MJ is. He has a weird angle, but he's going to throw. Oh, he okay, yeah, fine. He, he has he a great angle. Back so far he, he was enough. back far enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our group, we ended up, we were all had really tight hyzers because we were a little bit further. So they're 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 all in the the they're in the spot. garden they're, zone um, with the right wind and right conditions. They could actually be throwing mid ranges. Oh there. yeah, no, they're inside 300 feet easily. And that's now if that flips. That was a great roller. The out of bounds is over there far enough. That was a okay. great shot. Yeah, cool. Actually, 21 percent of the field birdied this hole. And the, the average was 5.45. So it did not, I mean, it played as a hard par five, but, you know, I have no problem with that number there because, you know, these three guys here are showing you how it's done. And that's, and that's, Textbook. that's just parked. Textbook. But right there, he's throwing an overstable mid range, maybe a slow speed driver, because he probably has, that's 330 maybe, 320 yep. to the basket. And it's for a right hander, the water, for players watching at home, that's not that scary of a shot because you're not going to. You're not going to throw a straight shot. You're going to throw out an overstable disc. You know, Ricky actually, not the best shot, but he's that's right in Ricky range. Got a bad bouncing tailwind, kick there. Yeah, the tailwind putt. I'd be surprised if this shot here was outside the circle. This is MJ. Oh, he's going left. You know, it's. It, I guess it. Uh, but you, you know, you, you, oh, you, you, you right. don't want to miss right. So yeah, right in the exactly. Circle. But you know, I don't want that putt coming down that hill towards no. the water. So. No. Robert here is playing out his 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 play up the left side. Now, actually, really nice the way these guys played it because we saw yep. what would happen if you had to play up the left side. Super difficult. And and I will say this: uh, I, I played the C tier on Sunday after church to uh, warm the court the course up, and I went to the left side and made a sixty foot putt to birdie. So it's possible that it it took a five hundred foot third shot and a long jump putt. So I would say it's very challenging. Definitely. Robert, I think that's a putt for six. So that's what you're going to have from the drop zone is, you know, a probable six. But that's – I don't want people to drive out of bounds and have an easy par. After that tee shot, he should yep. be he should be happy with, with what happened there. I mean – And and Ricky, yeah. you know, from where his drive and second shot was, he's probably not happy to not birdie that hole. But two birdies there and, and a par and a bogey is probably about, you know – is actually better than the average, though. Yeah, they, looking at it, look looked like Ricky threw a driver into the green there. I yeah. think he actually could have thrown a mid-range. I think he could have thrown a mid-range, yeah. Wow, Th- this hole is probably, you know, this my second favorite hole in the course. This is a new hole. 14, Nate, tell us about it. Yeah, so hole 14, this is actually an addition from last year. Uh, this was a par three, and, and you moved it way back there. But just 500. Feet. Yeah, you want to basically you want to throw your drive right down the middle. Try to get into the shadow of that big tree that's straight away out there. That MJ is going. That's a great line with his crank. Is he going to get to that shadow? That oh, that's the shadow I'm talking that's perfect. about. Perfect. Yeah, he's he's in the garden zone. From there, he's going to have a big hyzer out over the water to a side hill pin. Nico is not happy with that drive. He's in bounds and just is just too low. Yeah, so. it was left and low. This hole actually played is only the tenth most difficult hole. So it, it actually, you're not going to see that with you know wind that maybe we could have today. But the wind on this round was perfect, and that's a perfect shot. Yeah, and honestly, I'm a little bit surprised that roller. There's a lot of things that could happen. I mean, the everything slopes towards the water, and Robert is. 
doing the same. I, I, that, I, that, that is, that's going to be really good if it stays off the, the out-of-bounds line. I mean, that's... He could be a little obstructed with that. Oh, that's. I just want to. I want to make a point though. He's 12 feet ahead of NJ, who threw a nice shot right down the middle. A lot less factors in yes. it. So. No, um, I would never. I, I. I would always throw that line that MJ took. I. I, I mean, that's the roller is dangerous here, and that's. Yeah. I what mean, a that good is, view of that shot. That, that is. Was, that was smashed. He was. He was 600 feet from the basket, probably. He was way back there, and he just threw that probably 500 plus feet. So yeah, we got to hand it to the Jomas boys. That was a perfect view it of was. what he was looking at, and uh, and that lake is seeing that drone footage of that lake is so beautiful. And MJ, perfect. that is perfect. Are, are we gonna see a pro tracer here over the water? Nope, no, we didn't. <laughs> I, I mean, we didn't. It's uh, you know, MJ's playing well. He's locked in. Yep. He's uh, he's been putting a lot of this stuff inside the circle, making making some. He made a few good putts so far, but a lot of his shots have been inside the circle. Yeah. And you know, watching this round, uh, I I see most of my rounds from uh, from the front seat yep. there. And, you know, we're playing with with a, a player like Ricky, but this is a typical Ricky round. Just you know, just kind of staying in there, making some good putts. But he hasn't made any crazy putts. He hasn't yeah. made any 80 foot Ricky putts. But that right there. I mean, this hole's 800 feet with road to the left, lake to the right. To have a park job on that hole is impressive. Yeah. But you know what? No wind makes this hole a lot easier. If I mean, if, if, if there's wind, I mean, you may see no birdies. If there's a straight headwind. Oh, definitely. I mean, you may see nobody get this hole. And Robert, that was a birdie. Good a for Robert. A phenomenal birdie by Robert. Good That's for Robert. Good for him. Through the roller, through the big hyzer, nailed his putt. And that know. roller is, that's, I mean, that's a great shot but that's aggressive so yeah I, I don't i don't see much reason for the roller uh, it seems a little bit dangerous to me but I, was that i believe that was three birdies in that hole yeah three is, birdies in a, in a par which is incredible i mean that's really good there were 27 birdies today on that hole i mean that's playing awesome for them definitely absolutely it's uh it's it's a good addition to the course, so good hole, on you. Hole 15, we had to have a hole to come back, and so um, Mando left of that first tree on the right. This hole actually played over par by just a little bit, which is really surprising. And, I mean, there must be some out of bounds to the left that people are going in, but just straight uphill playing 360-ish, 315, but it's playing 360 probably. Yeah, the <laughs> it's it is surprising it played over par, but I I guess I'm really not surprised. Wow, that looks good. Throwing a mantis there, it looks like right just on the edge of the circle, circle elevated edge. basket we have here. True, so that adds a difficulty. And this shot, I love throwing sidearm, and I I can't get a sidearm there. I mean, this is a long ways up the hill, and with the wind bouncing the way it is, it's probably I think Ricky would change his strategy for round two because it is tough to get up a hill with the sidearm here. It's tough angle. The the, the hill's going to the left. It's going to yeah. pull the disc the other way. And that left-hand tree really comes into yep. play here. Um, this, is a, this is a good shot. That looks, I mean, that looks... I mean, that's where a lot of players are going to land. It circles that short. It's tough to get all the way up there. Unless you're Nate Doss, and you, you were, what, <laughs> six inches from the back yeah, line? Yeah, I was from the back line. Now, the, the wind is actually over our right shoulder here, um, blowing to the left. So as the nose of those discs yeah. get down, it's shoving them down. But I got mine a little flat. It just pushed a little bit long. What what are you throwing here, Buzz? Let's see if Ricky can do something for us. Oh. oh, I was throwing a Buzz in practice, and I kept coming up short. So I'm actually throwing an Undertaker. Okay, yep. Um, which you know, again, I'm not throwing it full speed because sure. I think I would yeah, go long. You go long, yeah. But I think I, because of that uphill factor, it's a little bit more uphill than you think. MJ, you know, these are I mean, these are putts were, they want to make, but yeah. this is an elevated basket. Out of bounds long. Out of bounds long. Um, and really, it doesn't look like anything is moving by those bushes. So, And even on these short putts with an elevated basket, Ricky, he took his time. You, I mean, it is not easy putting on an elevated basket. They're not used to it. They don't do it on as many tournaments. And when it is there, it's maybe one or two holes. Yeah, and I mean, I like the, you know, these are some nice elevated baskets. We got our sponsors there. Uh, you know, we obviously wouldn't be able to be here without our sponsors of the tournaments. And it just is, is that a little bit of an added challenge. But at the end of the day, it's just like putting uphill. All pars Star there. Star par there, yeah. Um, six, two six unders at 308 over. Anything under par here, I mean, is a decent score. Lifetime warranty and 1% back to the planet.
Temper Craft USA. Temper your thirst. And there was you again, <laughs> spinning your disc. Hole 16, this is the same as last year, except for there's a Mando left to this power line way down here. Um, played right around par, just kind of throw a sidearm, maybe throw a turnover hard in the second shot, pretty straightforward. So this is, it's definitely not a soft par four, but it's a very gettable par four. You want to get it. Yeah, you're gonna. I think as a TD, you're gonna you're gonna be surprised here. There's a, there's a lot of rollers. Oh sure. Happening on this hole. Okay, yeah, you're right. You're uh, right. MJ, sorry. that is. That's a. Mantis. Sit down. Sit down. Yeah. Okay. The, the tough angle there. But the fairway is falling way left. That yeah. turned out to be a great shot. But you're gonna see some rollers here. Ricky's throwing one. No, I like the roller here. You're right. That is a phenomenal play because, I mean, that is. Look how far it's, it's getting down there. That that is. If it uh, stays out of the bush, he's even even whoa. on the edge there. He's he, he's probably got a standstill. I mean, that is. There's a that, gap there that he might have went out of bounds, but it doesn't. I don't, we don't see any indication of that. And Robert, that is a really aggressive roller. See, now he's going to go out of bounds left, and that's the fear of any roller because of the way the hill falls away. It's going to go, go to out water. of bounds left in the water. Well, Oops. there's a line, but oh, yeah, it's like a double whammy. Double whammy, you lose your disc out <laughs> and of bounds. Be. So, we're, yeah, we're going to see three rollers here. And, yeah, this is – I like this course because it has a lot of variety. You're seeing a lot of different shots thrown out here, and that is – that's perfect. That's perfect. It's better than Ricky's because Ricky could be in the bush or wherever, you know, by the road. But that is an easy chip up 180 foot putter shot. <laughs> you guys, those players made that roller look easy. It's not Trust that easy. Trust me, it's not that easy. Um, Good shot there by Robert. He was he was back there. Way he's, he's got a 40 footer for his uh, his four. I want to, I want the the fans to realize how difficult this upshot is. It's up and over a hill. You know, up over a little ridge line to a downhill finish. Guarded by a big tree. Guarded by a big tree. And I mean that, that shot. That was a TI that was a ledgestone TI banger. There it, you it's go. attracted to those baskets. They, it I, is. That's what it is. And so St. Jude. It's loving them. This See, is a, Nico is just this this is an easy forehand up. If it sits down, he's circles edge. Probably not thrilled that's not parked, but he's putting. MJ Ricky. shot was so good though, and that was incredible. Oh yeah, he, is not. He made it look way too easy. Ricky is putting, putting. for eagle. That was oh no, six. sit. All right, he's gonna sit down. Nate, that was a 540 foot roller. Incredible, yeah. Ricky just he threw it on that inside line, and he he rode the he rode the Oof. hill the whole way. I mean, if he had flattened that out, he could have been parked with yeah. his roller. I, mean, I can't imagine. Steve Brinster told me that he thinks a roller could get to the basket, and we just proved that. We just that. saw it. And that's a just sneaks in there by Nico. That's a great putt. Good putt, buddy. Birdie's a good hole here, or a good score here. Uh, it could you, you very easily. Oh, Rick, oh Ricky is. Uh, he was just a little unstable there, but. Ricky he, puts a lot of effort into his putt and he uh it, everything was legal there he, he was legal yeah. he was behind his lie so he fell backwards if MJ. he falls forward that's when you know it would be a foot fault god good for mj really great round going yeah you know keeping up with ricky on a course that maybe is not perfect for him but he's just proving that uh he's a great disc golfer regardless of the course look how beautiful that lake is beautiful. hole 17 glass it's glass. I We're going to see white caps today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hole 17. This is another iconic hole. It reminds me of 17 at USDGC. Not quite as hard because there's no stroke in distance, but and the drops one shorter, but tough green. Yeah. Yeah. So straight right to left wind here. And let's just see how these guys do. MJ's throwing what looks like a driver. And that's just not the play. It, it's short. It's yeah. A, for me, I'm actually throwing like a Buzz OS type disc. I think that's the kind of play. A Wasp is probably too far for someone like you. I got a drone. I'm yep. throwing a drone on this one. Ricky's going sidearm. I like that play wind. too, just not the right wind for it, but he's going to be in bounds, it looks like. Yeah, so he'll make that putt, I'm sure. I think MJ could you know, probably go to a Predator type disc maybe. or, or I, I would, I'd say a mid-range, a Buzz maybe for, I think for he, him. He, 
this is there's just a lot of space out to yeah. the right, and so you can you can kind of throw a really stable overstable mid range Nico short as See, well. See, that's yeah, that's. I mean, it's not in, in the green is only 35 feet deep, so it's it's wide, but it's not it's not an easy landing zone. No, what you're seeing here is pretty much the typical, uh, probably the typical thing you're gonna see, and you know, and wow, you, awesome, you, that's a great shot. And you say that this was oh, actually let's look, look at, at this. this Robert going look how high way up in the air. The wind is just bringing it, and look at the sharp turn there at the end, mm. and it's parked. Great shot, awesome. Actually, this plane is the third easiest hole in the course. Um, you know, so th this was very gettable today. The wind made it very gettable. 45% of the field birdied this hole. So this is basically a birdie or a bogey because 37% bogeyed it. Yeah, and that's one thing that I wish, you know, on a lot of our island holes we could fix. I'd like to see larger islands. Sure. Just because I'd like to see people getting on the islands but not making their putts. Wow, Ricky unstable again. I'm a little bit surprised about that. He... I mean, of course he made it. I, I just, he was anxious today, and you could really tell it in his round. He wanted a lot of birdies, and he's gotten them so far, eight of them, and, and no bogeys. So good, good on Rick. Um, but You know, on that, I mean, he was on that right side especially. You can have a 40-foot putt sure. on the island. So, But it is, uh, it's a narrow green. So. It is a very narrow green. I do like the islands in disc golf, but I would just, I would sure. honestly love to see um, uh, slightly bigger islands that, you know, you still have to get sure. on, but yeah. you, you, you might have some trouble once. And that's kind of what the bridge hole is. You can kind of bail left. So. Absolutely. Hole 18, same as last year. All those disc wrap banners. Thanks to them again. Uh, Mando left. Roller's a great play here. If you're Paul Macbeth, maybe big and high as your 600 feet is the big play to the left, but. Roar is the play here, I think. Maybe a backhand, maybe a sidearm. So kind of anything is actually the play here, Nate. Yeah, I, I think anything but a backhand low. Yeah, yeah. The, the backhand low is just a, such a tough shot just because of the low ceiling. And Ricky's throwing. Ricky's throwing a roller. Now, we, were, we had a really strong uh, crosswind here. Oh, and Ricky just didn't quite turn it over enough. Well, it, the wind was the coming wind, yeah. right to left. Now, these banners are still right now, but it was a right to left really pushing the roller down towards the water. And we're going to see, so this is a cut roller. Yeah, that's not. Flip up, that's going to be OB. You really got a, a cut roller. I mean, and Robert's throwing a couple rollers today, and, you know, but cut roller is not quite the play here. It looks yep. like MJ's probably going roller as well. Yeah, he oh. went low left, but his disc had enough flip on it. I actually saw this, and I didn't know if he turned out wow. in bounds, which he did, which he is He probably threw lucky. a crank, so he, he probably threw a flippier disc. Nico so we're going to see, roller what, here. four rollers here? Yep. And, and you're going to see a lot of that, especially yeah. with this wind. I think if you had a big wind coming off the left shoulder, you might see some more guys. Oh! And you know what? That's going to be okay. So he got off that a little bit. Um, you know, he's going to be in a decent spot. And Robert went in, in the water, so he's throwing three there. This actually played as the ninth most difficult hole. So kind of, it was the wind. If, it, if this hole has a headwind, it's not easy. And MJ... Mm -hmm. On a very rare sidearm, but he really didn't have a choice there. No, and that's that's fine. He's playing yep. this hole for par yep. now. Yep. Where Ricky and Nico are, are located, there's either a hyzer line, which we're gonna see which we're gonna see Nico throw. He's gonna throw the big hyzer. This is this is definitely a play, you guys. I mean, let's oh, see yeah. where he ends up. So he's yeah, well, that's he's awesome. 28, 29 feet. I mean, that's that was an incredibly skillful shot um, with the with the hill falling away. Ricky's going to throw through the bars. Okay, this is uh, dangerous. From my insurance background, I'm just oh. watching him not break his wrist there and Probably getting scared. It. But that is, dude, that is uh, that's incredible. There we go. Going through the bars. Would you have done that? No. Not at all. I, 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 I don't have that good of a sidearm. First of all, I probably would have tried to maybe throw a turnover. And actually, during my round, I was, in that, I was within a foot of where Ricky landed. And I actually threw a turnover to the edge of the circle. Didn't make the putt. Um, MJ going back-to-back -back sidearms. That was, looks like a zone. Got an overstable disc. So he's, he's putting for a four there. He, to me, it looked like he overthought that one a I little think bit. I think he could have just thrown a yeah, he could have just backhand putter. He's so good. That's got a bite there. That's, that, that could be in the water for Robert. Just a little aggressive. So MJ actually was well short here. So Is he going to nail it? Yes, look he at, is. Look at that overstable wow. ringer with his. That was a great putt there. To fit, that was a great round. MJ. It was. It was a really, I would call it a solid round Clean. for MJ. I think he's happy. He had one bogey on the island hole. Um, but if, if that's all happy. your damage on this course, 
Great round. That's a good putt by Nico. Good finish. That was Nico a great after, birdie. I mean, yeah, after the bogey on 17 to finish with a birdie, he's feeling good going into to round two. Ricky's probably thinking, you know, he's probably thinking, I'm going to be leading this tournament. A clean nine under par. What, <laughs> yeah, a, what, <laughs> what a solid finish. I mean, he birdied the last three out of the last four holes. And you saw his look there. I, I, I think he was kind of, I'm not sure without that, that, if that look was exasperation or just kind of like, I got through it, I'm okay. I think I think that's exactly what it was. Good putt by, by Robert. Robert, there. good finish. Want to thank him for his support with St. Jude. Absolutely. Hopefully he had fun. Good luck to him in the rest of the tournament. So two birdies there, great. Nine under for Ricky. Six for MJ is a great score. Nico and then Robert there, just a tough finish. But Robert, I'm sure he had fun and yeah. neat experience. There's our leaderboard. 12 under for Josh Anton. Is that could, I mean, that's a great round. Amazing, amazing. Great for Josh coming back uh, from a long, long time off uh, in his personal life. But uh, good to see Josh up there. And I'm excited to see what's going to happen. I think this tournament is definitely a marathon and not a sprint. These guys proved it today. There was a lot of anxious throws out there on the course, but nine under par was our best our best round, and it was great to watch. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm sure we'll see you uh, again here soon for round two. Absolutely. Thanks, Nate. Yep, thank you, Nate Squared. <laughs>